This is the next section of the radio that we're going to be looking at. And you're going to say, well, why did you pick out such a big section? Well, it's because it's a single loop. All the electronics from here to here and all the way back again, this is a loop. And anything along that loop, it goes bad, it stops working. So this is an entire loop. And uh, this is a phase lock loop. And we'll need to talk about every individual thing here before it makes sense to us, okay? So today, we're going to be talking about one component, okay? And it's used twice here. It's called the BB405. It's used twice, and we're going to be taking a look at that. And once we understand that thing, then we can understand this thing, okay? And so, yeah, let's talk about the BB, uh, BB405. What is that thing? The BB405 is a UHF variable capacitance diode. Variable capacitance diode. You can say, well, a capacitance diode, why, why do you, that's weird, why do you want to add capacitance to a diode? Well, it is a diode, but it's only used as a capacitor, so it's really a variable capacitor. It happens to be a di diode, but it's a variable capacitor, and it's a voltage variable capacitor. You can tune it with a voltage, and you can change its capacitance by voltage. Uh, it's a really neat little device. <clears throat> so, here it is, and it has a bunch of things. This is the graph that's most... Uh, most useful. This is the uh, capacitance of the device versus voltage. So as you put more and more voltage on the device, the capacitance goes down. Okay, it starts higher, and as you increase the voltage, it goes down. Okay, so let me draw a picture of that to see if it makes sense. So what is a capacitor? Well, simplistically, a capacitor is two plates of metal. Okay, and uh, you have plus charges on one side and minus charges on the other side, and that creates, uh, that creates the capacitors, okay? And uh, so if you have a large plate, the capacitance goes up. So um, you can see that we are uh, building up a situation here where we have Charges on one side of the plate and charges on the other side of the plate. Um, let's talk about the diode. Okay, what is what is a diode? Right. So the diode inside is going to be a uh, an N junction and a P junction. Okay, it's going to have a layer of it's going to have a layer of P and it's going to have a layer of N. And it might have some stuff in between, but basically it's this thing here, okay? Usually there's a layer in between of, of something or other, intrinsic layer. We'll just call it I, we'll call it an intrinsic layer, where it's just, it's just not, po over here you've got a lot of positive charges, over here, uh, over here you have a lot of positive charges, over here you have negative charges, N for negative, P for positive, sorry. It's a lot of positive charges over here, and then there's like no charges at all, all in the middle. Well... That looks a lot like a capacitor, doesn't it? If you have charges on one side and charges on the other side, you're going to get some type of uh, uh, capacitive action here, right? All right. Now, how do you make a variable capacitor, right? Well, let's say you put voltage on your um, diode, then you will have a lot more positive charges and a lot more shoot, I did it again, a lot more positive charges and a lot more negative charges, and they'll kind of push in. There's not a lot of room for them, so they're going to kind of crowd, okay? And then the distance between the two is going to get smaller, okay? And so there's just not going to be much room for anything more. And when there's less room, the capacitance is going to go down, all right? So let's, uh, let's test that out, okay? Now I'm going to test that out with a circuit. Okay, so I'm going to have a diode, reverse, reverse biased. You always use these reverse biased. And um, I'm going to change the voltage, and then we're going to measure the capacitance of this, of this capacitor. Now, there's going to be a DC bias on this thing, and we don't want to have that DC go into our, into our uh, capacitance meter. So we're going to AC couple it, all right? We're going to put our uh, capacitance meter... Uh, over here, and um, 
yes, this will add capacitance, okay? Well, what we want to see is a change of capacitance. We don't need the absolute value. We just want to see if we change this voltage, does the capacitance that this capacitance meter sees change? It'll be this capacitor in series with this capacitor to ground. And will it change, okay? So let's give that a try. <laughs> Oh, I should mention, I don't have any varicaps, so I'm going to use a 1N4001. And a 1N4001 is a large enough diode that it has some capacitance already in it. And people use this as a poor man's um, uh, varactor, okay, uh, these variable capacitance diodes. Um, so so it, it will work the same way as our BB405, okay? It'll be the same idea. So let's go to try it. All right, let's uh, look at some voltage. Um, so this is the voltage I'm going to be applying to the 100K ohm resistor. We'll measure some capacitance here. We'll tell it we want to measure capacitance, and we will change the frequency to 100 kilohertz. That's as fast as this thing goes. Okay, and right now we are measuring 93 picofarads. All right, so let's increase some voltage. And look at that. 0.34 volts, it's gone down to 58 picofarads. I'll go up a little farther. Uh, 0.6 volts, it's gone down to 35 picofarads. So you can see that we're able to change the amount of capacitance we have by biasing that, that diode. And I think it'll finally kind of fail on us here, but yeah, it's not going to go any farther than that. But there is, there is a tunable range on this particular diode where uh, less voltage, go back to zero volts, we get the most capacitance. And then if we add some voltage, it goes down, okay? So that's what we need to know. All right, so we've proved here that the variable capacitor works, and we'll see how it's used in the, in the circuit.